Are you ready to go on an adventure? Tag along with Boston Kid Friendly Radio. Today, we're going to Park Street and the Boston Common. So, going to Boston Common is such a fun place to go as a family. There's a lot going on. There's lots of history there. There are people there. Even if there aren't any festivals, there's just... It, it's just the city encapsulated. And so I'm sure if you're a local, you've definitely been. And if you're a visitor, it's just a no brainer that you will go. But maybe you haven't broken it down into what it has to offer and, um, what is offered exactly at the Park Street exit for the T that is more relevant to that stop than to other stops. And we'll kind of talk about that and wrestle with that a lot throughout um, episodes, especially the next episode. We'll talk about how government center, there's not really anything there, but it actually has some things that are really important that make the most sense with it. So for instance, whenever you're doing Boston Common, a lot of people will go ahead and do the public garden. But in this case, it's not the most logical answer. So without further ado, a place to eat. What we thought was the perfect place to eat was ZD Italian Express. So whether you're going in the spring, the summer, the fall, the winter, whatever season you're going, it's the perfect place to go. So you don't have to worry about it not being there like food trucks. Otherwise, I would absolutely say go to a food truck. Um, but it's available year round. They have a ton of options for food and they range in prices. Like you can get a single slice of pizza for under $3 or you can get a salad or you can get a calzone or you can get pasta or, I mean, there was just such an expansive menu that it's really an awesome place to go eat. But What's most important and why we chose it as the place to eat is because they do have bathrooms. They're not open to the public, but they are there for patrons of their restaurant. Um, and there are high chairs and it's huge. Most places in that area, they don't have a lot of seating, but there is tons of seating there. Like I said, there are two high chairs. I think there are two. Um, well, I know there are at least two. Um, there's plenty of room for strollers, lots of food choices. I mean, really, hands down, for a lot of reasons, that's the place to eat. Um, and it's not going to break the bank either. Um, one of the other reasons why it's a great place to eat is because, as we always mention, the grocery store right next door to it, it's actually in the same entrance lobby area. There's a place called Lambert's. And so um, you can go there to get other stuff like on your way out, whether it's something to drink or other things to eat. Um, there aren't any diapers there, not that I saw anyways. So if you're going to do the grocery store, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. If you do need a grocery store to get diapers or pouches or things like that, um, you'll need to go to CVS and CVS is off of Winter Street going towards the heart of downtown crossing. So that's your best bet for that. Um, the place to play. So it's very obvious for me to say the tadpole playground. However, I sometimes get an anxiety attack just looking at the playground because there are always a massive amount of kids and especially having three kids, even though one of them can't walk. <laughs> um, I am, I'm constantly losing one of the kids, like watching them play. And so I wind up just like watching the exit, like nobody's running through the exit. We're all good here. So it's somewhat anxiety ridden for me. And, um, my youngest, Emma, she just got totally plowed by a kid, like hit the ground harder than I've ever seen her hit the ground. She didn't freak out. She did scream at the kid because she was mad. <laughs> But it's just, it's that kind of playground. So it can be somewhat stressful, but 
it has to be mentioned that the tadpole playground is there and it's a great little playground. And then it's right next to the frog pond, um, which is great both in the summer and the winter time. Um, but I also have to mention that because of the proximity of Beacon Hill to Park Street T-Stop versus any of the others, this is a great time to go explore Beacon Hill. And inside of Beacon Hill, there's another really great place to play. And so we played there too, because it's a quiet little getaway. And I believe that it's just called the Myrtle Street Playground, but it's at Myrtle and Russell Street. Um, and it's run by the Boston Parks Department and everything. And there are a bunch of like the old toys that people have brought in there. There's even um, a painted soccer goal on the brick wall so that you can play like wall ball. Um, there are some teeny tiny picnic tables so that if you bring your lunch or you get lunch and want to go take it somewhere and you just, if you, <laughs> so like I said, I mean, we all know that Boston Common is filled with people and it's filled with just craziness. So if you want to get away from that, this is one of the perfect little hidden gems to get away from and absolutely worth the walk. Just also realize, um, kind of for your extra information and for dangers or hazards or, I mean, it's neither one of those. I can't think of a good word. Anyways, because it's Beacon Hill, it's old. There's a lot of, um, differences in their way of life versus our way of life in terms of like way back in the 1800s, like they weren't necessarily pushing giant strollers. So if you have a giant stroller, you may not even be able to walk on some parts of the sidewalk. Um, but regardless, just know that it's there and it's totally worth going to, especially if you want to walk through Beacon Hill like we did, which was just a breath of fresh air in general. Um, and then the point of interest, um, that I'm going to highlight is the Boston Common Carousel. You can also, um, go to like the Granary Burying Ground, which is great, especially if you have older kids, because there's lots of history there, lots of historic figures and famous American families buried there. Um, but for the Boston Common Carousel, it's like $3 per ticket, but if you are a parent standing next to your child that's under 42 inches tall, then you don't have to pay for a ticket. So we only paid for two tickets and I rode in between our girls. Um, and it's just a fun little carousel merry-go-round to go on. Um, I think it's open until six most nights, I think. Um, let me see. Yeah, most nights it's open until six, but Friday and Saturday is, it's open until 10, um, and it opens in the morning, or it's not open until 10, sorry, open until eight. And in the mornings, every day of the week, or it opens at 10. Um, and you can find more information. You can, sorry. Um, you can find more information in the show notes about the carousel. I've got a link for you. Um, but it's just a fun, quirky little carousel. There's a dragon and a rooster and um, all kinds of crazy, <laughs> crazy stuff on the carousel. So that is the point of interest. Um, know that if you need a bathroom, there is one at the Frog Pond. Like I said, if you go eat at uh, ZD Italian Express, you can use their bathroom, but only if you're a paying customer. Um and just remember that kind of the north side of the common isn't necessarily stroller friendly. So if you're trying to go towards the state house um, and back, that you're going to run into some stairs unless you go all the way around. So just be be mindful that if you're going to plan a day or part of a day at park to have it planned out so that you don't have to take the stairs if you have a stroller in your family. So 
don't forget that you can also sign up for our newsletter and in doing so you can get some great little freebies, not just the four little freebies that you can get now, which includes a destination discoverer, um, some, an I spy game, some coloring pages, several different things, but you'll get other freebies in the future and you'll get updates. And we have a great Facebook group. The Facebook page also has updates and events um, because the podcast isn't necessarily about events. It's about the everyday stuff. So if you also want great events, check out the Facebook page and the Facebook group as well. So until our next stop in our next adventure with Charlie, I'll talk to you later.